Today we're going to implement a swap block. First thing I'm going to do is increase the size of my layout. So my width, I'm going to add six squares. So I'm going to make this 1040. Then I need to go to project properties and make the window size 1040 to match. Then I'm going to go to layers and unlock all of my layers. And I'm going to select everything that I want to move over. And then holding shift, if I press the right arrow, it'll move 10 pixels at a time. So every four will be one square. Once I've moved over my six squares, I can lock my pieces in my background and move to my UI layer. I'm going to copy a label, place it over here. I'm going to change this to say swap. Then I'm going to add a tiled background underneath it. And I'm going to load the next swap box. That is 180 by 100. So I'm going to go to size make that 180 by 100 and I'm going to put that underneath my swap. You'll see that there's more space on the left than there is on the right so I'm going to hold shift and move that over 10 pixels and that should center it and I'm going to do the same thing to go up so that it's centered on these eight boxes here. You might have to move swap up a little bit so that it doesn't overlap with the box. I'm going to go back to my projects. I have two tiled backgrounds. One is the Next box, so let's name that. Tell background two is my swap box. Let's name that. I'm going to take a next block because that's already formatted for being in a box. And I will clone that. And this next block five, I'm going to move right here. I'm going to change that to the swap block. Then in this blank space here, I'm going to insert a tiled background to put my controls. So I'm going to load my controls.png. If you want to change the controls, there's a template here for you to edit. This is 240 by 640. So 240, 640. Move that so that it takes up the rest of the space. Name that object as well. Then I'm going to switch over to the event sheet. First, I need to randomize that block, so let's copy and paste one of these. Hit back and change it to the swap block so that it starts as a random piece and not red every time. Then we should do a couple changes inside of controls. First, for pause, I'm going to go to my block and I'm going to toggle the Boolean for can move so that way when we pause the screen, we can't also still move the block. And I'm also going to add the ability to press down to make the block move down one square at a time so that we can move it faster without hitting space to make it go all the way down. That should be really similar to moving right or left. So I'm going to copy one of those blocks and paste it. And instead of pressing the right arrow, I'm going to press the down arrow. Instead of checking one block to the right, I'm going to check one block below. Do the same thing with board blocks. This is zero, this is block size. And then instead of setting the X, we're gonna set the Y. And instead of self.x, we'll do self.y plus block size. And then we need to implement our control. So let's add a sub event, keyboard, key pressed, the control key. If we can also move, so let's copy and paste that. Then we're going to add a local variable to keep track of our animation frame. So temp blocks animation frame. And I'm going to put that underneath my control press event. And then I'm going to add a blink sub event so that it happens no matter what. And I'm going to go ahead and swap those. So first we'll do a system set value of temp to our blocks animation frame. So we're storing our animation frame inside a temp. And then we're gonna take our block and we're gonna set the frame equal to whatever swap was. So swap block dot animation frame. Then we need to check to see if that's okay. So let's add a blank sum of it. This will be very similar to when we rotated. So let's go to rotate and I'm going to copy overlapping board copy overlapping blocks and then I want to see if it's not overlapping those 
If it's not overlapping them, then I can go ahead and confirm my swap. So then that means I need to go to the swap block, set its frame equal to temp. So now what was in block will now be in the swap block. After I've done that, I need to make adjustments if either of those blocks was yellow. So first, we'll do a sub event. And we're going to take the block and we're going to compare our animation frame. If it's not equal to the swap block animation frame. So this makes sure that we're not going from yellow to yellow. And we'll add another condition to see if our blocks animation frame is greater than or equal to six. So that means if we're changing to a yellow block, then we're going to want to change the X and the Y. So let's do set X equal to self dot X plus half a block. So block size divided by two. And then let's do a set y equal to self dot y minus half a block. So minus block size divided by two. Then let's copy and paste this whole thing for the opposite direction. So let's hit back and change this to swap block. So now if we're going from yellow to something else and our swap block is yellow, then these will need to be opposite. So instead of adding, I'm going to subtract. Instead of subtracting, I'm going to add. And here's where we confirmed our swap if it did not overlap. So that means we need to add an else in case something is overlapping. And if that's the case, we want to change our block back. So let's set our frame for our block equal to temp, which is our old block value. So that means we will not swap if it overlaps. And now because we moved everything over, we need to go and adjust all of those things. So that is affected when we create a new block. We created our new block six spaces over, so that's the middle plus the two from the side. We need to move it six more spaces, so let's make that 12 times block size instead. Block conversion, we want to make sure we're looking at the correct place. So instead of column plus two for our two gray blocks, we moved over six, so let's change that to eight. Same thing here, two plus six is eight, so change that to eight. And our remove row will need to be the same thing. So change our column plus twos to column plus eight. And assuming we did everything correctly, we should be able to test this. We should be able to pause it and not be able to move. I should be able to hit down to go down one square at a time. And I should be able to swap between my piece and another piece. And I should not be able to swap if that would push the piece into a wall.